Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. So today we're doing the buyer's guide or the review for the DCS module Flaming Cliffs 3. So within this module we get the SU-27 flanker, the SU-33 naval flanker, the F-15C eagle, the MiG-29, and we actually get several variants of the MiG-29, but we're just going to treat it as a single aircraft for simplicity of this video. The A-10A Warthog, and the J-11A, the Chinese version of the flanker, and we actually get another type of Su-25 as well. And today we're going to look at all of those aircraft in one rather large video, I must admit, except for the Su-25. So first we have to understand what Flaming Cliffs 3 is. It is a package of all of these aircraft that we've talked about and they are available to buy either as the full package for around $50 or you can buy them separately for kind of $10 to $20 for each aircraft. It's just more efficient to buy them all in one and you can use them in the same DCS world as all of the other separate modules that I've been reviewing. There is, however, a big difference between Flaming Cliffs 3 aircraft and the non-Flaming Cliffs 3 aircraft. In that, roughly speaking, the Flaming Cliffs 3 aircraft are what we call low fidelity models in DCS, i.e. non-clickable cockpits, and everything else in DCS world is a high fidelity model. An easy way to detect the difference between the two is a price. A single low fidelity model is about 20, $10 to $20. A single high fidelity model is what? For up to kind of $70. All of the high fidelity aircraft have cockpits that are interactive actively and passively. So passively because the gauges work and you can read the gauges and read the displays and actively because you can push the buttons with your mouse. The low fidelity model cockpits are passive only. So the gauges work, you can read the gauges, you can read the displays, the radar displays and whatnot, but you can't go in and click the buttons. That's the difference between a low fidelity and a high fidelity in terms of a cockpit. As well as that, the control systems are very simplified in the Flaming Cliffs 3, the low fidelity aircraft. And that is because they are essentially a stepping stone, a starter aircraft if you want, to get you into DCS world, which is a very complicated simulator. So there's a damn good reason why they're here. Whereas the high fidelity aircraft are what we call study level sim aircraft. So you have to learn to do everything that you would in the real aircraft essentially to be able to fly the high fidelity aircraft. So the Flaming Cliffs 3, the low fidelity aircraft are a lot easier to fly. And like I said, I always recommend people starting with a low fidelity aircraft to begin with because there's so much to learn in DCS. Do not, however, think that these aircraft are incapable just because they are a low fidelity model. For instance, at uh, the time of making this, what, well, August 2019, the two top medium range fighters in DTS as it stands at the moment are both Flaming Cliffs 3 aircraft, the F 15C and the Su 27 flanker. So they are perfectly capable aircraft, especially in air to air operations. So as ever, I need to keep this review as uniform as possible. And so for that, I'm going to use my normal review structure. And we're going to treat Flaming Cliffs 3 as one module. So we're going to do an average score for all of these aircraft, but we are going to look at all of the aircraft. Then for these scores, I will put them in the main data sheet where you can compare it against other modules in DCS World. I will link this in the video description. Please go look at that, where you will have not just my ratings, but the ratings of the other GR members to make sure everything's fair. We will be looking at one, capability, weapons, sensors, and nav. Two, kinetic performance, the kinetic abilities of these aircraft compared to the others in DCS World. Three, the visuals inside the cockpit and outside the cockpit rated one to five. Four, sound effects inside the cockpit, outside the cockpit rated one to five. Five, interactivity in detail, how interactive are the cockpits? Six, Flight models. What are the flight models that like to fly? How convincing are they? Seven. Difficulty. How difficult is this module overall to pick up, learn, and learn to use the aircraft well? And eight. A quick history. So let's get stuck in. Okay, first off in the F-15C. So let's look at capability. We're going to go to weapons. We've got a lot of pylons we can use here. A lot of ordnance we can carry. On the outer pylons we can have an air-to-air -air AMRAM AIM-120 Bravo and AIM-120 Charlie. Now I've done a thorough review and comparison of all of the medium range radar guided air-to-air -air missiles in DCS World. It's pretty empirical, it's a big hour long video you can go and watch on that to see me test it. And the AIM-120C came out by far the best missile in DCS World. So you see an aircraft that can carry this, uh, medium range we're talking about, it's a very good thing. Next, we're going to look at the sidewinders. We've got a Lima, a Mike, a Papa, and a Papa, F, a Papa 5. Different variants throughout the years. The Mike is the superior version. Similar you'd find on a Harrier or an A-10C. 
or the uh, the Tomcat. Same with Pylon 11. Next we're going to go on Pylon 2. We can have a fuel tank of 610 gallons, which is a lot. And we can have a total of about 25,000 pounds, I believe. And that's either the most or very near the most of the fighters that the fighters can carry in DCS. Pylon 3. Air to air, and it's the same as we had before on Pylon 1. Pylon 4. Air to air. And it's the two AMRAM variants, or we can go to a FOX-1 semi-active radar homing. I should say these type of FOX-3 missiles, these are FOX-1 type missiles, up to the Mike Hotel version, which is the, the superior ranged version. Next is Pylon 5, which is the same as Pylon 4. And Pylon 6 in the middle, we can have another 610 gallon fuel tank. As well as that, we have an M61 20 mil six barreled Gatling gun, the Vulcan gun, in the wing root cowling with over 1,000 rounds of ammunition. This is the only 4th gen pure air to air fighter in DCS world and in medium range, which is where most of the combat is done, it is regarded as the best still in DCS world because of its kinetic ability and the missiles that it can carry. Next is sensors. I don't think I can turn my radar on on the ground, but we've got a good solid modern radar here it is oversimplified as compared to the high fidelity modules like the hornet and whatnot but the majority of the big functions that we need are still there we can still sleeve it up and down we can zoom in and out and change the prf and so on this also has much simplified iff as compared to the high fidelity modules so for combat it's uh, far superior in terms of ease to use just not obviously as realistic we have a good modern range-based or signal strength RWR here for excellent situational awareness. It does not have a data link like the Hornet or the Flanker or the Tomcat, so that is one thing that lets it down. We have a good modern HUD, not perfectly realistic, but it tells you just about everything you need to know. We have a digital stores management page here. It is completely oversimplified, but it tells you roughly what you've got selected and uh, gives you a bit of function there. We have a good simplified ECM works and on testing it is among the most powerful in DCS for air to air and air to ground actually. We have no autopilot in this. We do have however semi and fully automatic trim or manual. We do have a good solid but simplified INS waypoint system. We have no ability to edit the waypoints here. It's all done in the mission editor. We have full ILS for landing on suitable runways. We do also have air-to-air -air refueling ability from boom style tankers i find it really difficult but you know it's it's doable and it's there and it's modeled, modeled really well we do also have a bucket load of countermeasures in terms of flare and chaff let's go to the next aircraft here we are in the flanker let's look at our stores all on one air-to-air -air, r73 the premier soviet vector thrust missile roughly on terms with the aim 9x not quite as good as the aim 9x of the Hornet or pods at the ECM here we do not have an internal ECM like the uh, jammer like the F-15 we have to take pods for that I've tested them and they are exactly the same effectiveness as an F-15 or any of the FC-3 air-to-air -air jammers Harlan 2 and 9 air-to-air -air, R-73 again and just spoke pods Harlan's 3 and 8 air-to-air -air, R-27ER considered the best FOX-1 semi-active radar homing missile medium range in DCS the E is for extended range. The R is for radar guided. R27 ET, the only long range IR guided Fox 2 type missile in DTS, incredibly effective. R and T are the same as these guys, but not extended range, so slightly less range, slightly more maneuverability. And the R73, which is an IR guided close range missile, if I didn't say before. Unlike the F 15, this is not a pure air to air fighter or air superiority fighter, we also have limited ground attack. Bombs. I said limited ground attack, but we do have a vast range of bombs. The two BTAB variants, anti-runway bombs, very effective. General purpose, high explosive, slick, unguided, fab 250 kilo, fab 500 kilo. KGM type of anti-armor and um, anti-personnel variants. They are multiple munition dispensers. MER racks with six times fab 100s or six times fab 250s, which is an amazing amount of bombs has a huge load carrying capacity this aircraft does we've got a series of rbk 250s and 550 kilos these are various types of cluster bombs sab 100 is an illumination type bomb pods smoke rockets 
Huge variety of rockets we have. A pod of five times medium caliber S-13 missiles. Rockets, sorry. The BAM-1 pod, which has 20 relatively low caliber S-8 type rockets of different warheads. And the mighty single high caliber S-25 rocket. Incredibly powerful. And we've got extras here. We can have two of each on that pod, as you can see. Pylon 4 and 7. The r 27 er or the non-extended rain version. Bombs. I believe that is the same as we saw before. Pods. Smoke. Pylons 5 and 6. Air to air. 27 R27ER or R. Bombs. I believe that's the same as before. Pods. Smoke and 6 I believe is the same. So as you can see a massive load carrying ability of air to air and air to ground. The only thing the flanker is missing is Fox 3 type missiles like R77s which would be the equivalent of the American AMRAAM. And this is the one reason why this is not generally considered as good as the F-15 in medium range BVR combat. It is however notably superior in close range combat generally accepted because of its missiles and its helmet mounted display. In terms of weapon deployment we have a radar roughly comparable to the F-15 radar air to air which is shown on the HUD here. We have a Russian style radar warning receiver in this guy here. Personally I don't find it as good for situational awareness but it does has, have other benefits that the NATO style displays do not have. We have either for navigation or data link purposes we can use this here navigation or data link depending in which base mode we're in. We have an ECM with detachable pods as we saw earlier. We have a simplified INS waypoint based system and full ILS landing capability, INS waypoints to be set in mission editor only. As well as the radar we also have an electro optical IRST, it's this knob on the top of the nose here so if we don't want to use our radar we can actually lock and track aircraft in a passive EO system and fire aircraft with FOX-2 missiles so that they don't even know that we're firing at them. This is the main major benefit of the flanker over the F-15 and makes them incredibly dangerous especially at low level shooting up. Ground to air ordnance, dropping bombs, we have a C basic CCRP and CCRP aiming system. Rockets, we have a CC, a good solid CCIP aiming system and air to ground guns. We do not have air to air refueling ability. We do not have external tanks that we can carry but the internal fuel of this aircraft is nearly as much as the F-15 with all of its tanks on. Let's go to the next plane. This is the J-11A, the Chinese variant of the flanker. It's not identical but it is very similar. The only things I'm going to note are the differences that I'm aware of and that is we can carry FOX-3 style missiles in the form of R-77 FOX-3 missiles. They are not empirically as good as an AIM-120 as you can see in my video that I did on the medium range missiles but they do narrow the gap between the flanker and the F-15C in general medium range BVR air to air combat. There are some other small differences with the aircraft. If I go to bombs, we can take um, extra amounts of bombs. We have twin racks where some of the flanker only has uh, single racks. Other than that, other than small, uh, small graphical differences like uh, the cockpit and the outside, some small differences, I know of no other real difference between this and the SU-27. This is the SU-33, the naval version of the flanker. Its capabilities are almost identical to that of the SU-27 land flanker so we'll just go over the differences. First of all we have an air-to-air -air refueling probe and we can refuel air-to-air -air, and the model is good with refueling air-to-air -air, there's no problems with that. We have an arrestor hook and carrier landing capability and everything works with that. The physics are all fine as compared to the high fidelity modules. Regard ordnance to be carried it does have more pylons than the SU-27 a slightly better load carrying capability. Now as far as I understand what weapons can actually be carried on those pylons are basically the same as the SU-27 we just have more pylons to use. The internal graphics of the cockpit or the layout of the cockpit is slightly different but mainly the same. The exterior model is of course different we have the uh, four plane little winglets as you can see here. There is a big general misconception that the SU-33 is a superior fighter in terms of dogfighting ability in DCS world. Do not fall for that. It is not. I thoroughly tested it against the SU-27 in almost every aspect. We've got sustained turn rate, immediate turn rate, speed, accelerations, and almost all of them, the SU-27, come out on top. 
this at the end of the day is two tons heavier for the extra gear that had to be added for the carrier ability one thing to note is that this has a special afterburner mode a bit like in the mig 21 where we can get extra temporary power this is usually used to help carrier takeoffs because you do not have a steam catapult system and this can actually be used in combat to a certain degree and boost your performance in some cases above the land flanker next is the mig 29 and I've always kind of thought of it as a mini flanker. It's an interceptor rather than a air superiority fighter. So it's designed to zoom up quick, take out targets or light attack, and then RTB quickly. It's not designed to loiter in the air. We look at its abilities in terms of weapons, air to air. We've got the R60M, which is an older type of IR close range missile, or an R73, the close range Russian Premier IR guided missile, or the R-77, the FOX-3 type missile that we looked at earlier, the equivalent of the NATO AMRAAM. Pods Smoke do have attack capability as well. We've got the same air-to-air -air missiles that we can carry here. Bombs, we've got pretty much the same bombs as the Su-27 flanker, but we're just missing a few compared to what the flanker had. So we're not going to go through all of those again. Smoke Pods Rockets. Again, similar to what we had in the flanker, we've got the S-24B, the large rocket instead of the S-25. I'm not sure what the difference is, to be honest. Inner pylons. We've got the addition of the R-27, the long-range FOX-1, semi-active radar homing ER. Also, the long-range FOX-2, IR-guided long-range missile here, as well as the non-extended versions and the close-range missiles we can carry. Bombs, I believe the same as the previous pylon. Extra fuel tanks we can carry, over a thousand litres. Smoke and the rockets again. And in the centre, we can have an extra 1400 litre fuel tank and one thing sorry I forgot to say with all of these Russian and Chinese planes so far as we don't have Gatling guns we have rotary guns that is a single barrel gun of I believe 30 millimeter it is generally considered a worse gun for air to air than the Mike 61 but it is still very effective generally speaking this aircraft has better kinetic ability than the Su-27 the flanker variants that we've looked at three previous planes however it has severely short range it does not carry much fuel and if you carry fuel tanks you severely limit your fighting ability so for the vast majority of missions the su-27 or the flanker variant is going to be favorable in terms of sensors and navigation it's almost identical to the flanker we have the same radar or similar radar to the flanker it works in the hub we have the forward looking irst eo sensor here to use with our IR guided missiles. One thing I apologize I forgot to say about the Russian planes so far is that they have a helmet mounted display so I could actually look around here with my head and this is another reason why these Russian aircraft in FC3 are superior to the NATO in close range. I can actually look up here and wherever I don't have a cross I can lock a target up like that and fire an off ball sight IR guided missile or I could fire a radar guided missile. So in dogfights that is an exceptional ability. With the same RWR down as the flanker. We do not have a data link or navigation capability here. That is purely a HUD repeater. We do have an ECM. I believe it is an internal on this aircraft. I stand to be corrected, but I believe the ECM is an internal ECM jammer on this aircraft. It sadly has no air-to-air -air refueling capability. It would be exceptional if it did because we would get over the main problem of this aircraft, which is, of course, fuel consumption fuel conservation and regarding navigation the same as the previous flankers we've got mission editor based INS simplified INS system with ILS landing capability next is the A10A is the original Warthog so it's not the same version the high fidelity A10C this is a previous simpler older version in terms of weaponry we've still got a hell of a lot 11 pylons here air to air we've got various sidewinder types including twin pylons up to mic variant equivalent of the F-15C and training missile bombs two times training bombs cluster munitions here 87 with dumb bomblets 97 with clever bomblets mark 82 general purpose 500 pound slick bomb and a high drag variant pods two different two different types of jammers the a the 184 contemporary with such aircraft as the in performance of the a10c and the harrier dummy sidewinder and the smoke two and ten bombs training same as we saw before but with the addition of multiple illumination bombs rockets two different types of pods a 131 and a 68 each with seven times 2.75 inch rockets of high explosive warhead willy peat white phosphorus parachute illumination practice smoke practice high explosive mark 5 and two other practice three and nine bombs three times training 
three times Mark 83's variants. These are all the same as we've seen before. Or a 2,000 pound dumb slick Mark 84 missiles. We have single variants of the AGM 65 Maverick. We've got the Delta, the Golf, the Hotel and the Kilo. Doing this purely by memory, but I believe the Delta and Golf are IR. The Hotel and the Kilo, I think, are opticals guided. Small warhead, big warhead, small warhead, big warhead. Training, 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 training. Or multiple versions of the small warhead IR, small warhead optical. Rockets, same as we saw before. Four and eight. Bombs, same as we've seen before. Fuel tanks. Rockets, same as we've seen before. Palance five and seven. Bombs, same as we've seen before. Remember that these canisters are not wind corrected as they are for the A10C, 103 and 105 variants. Pylon 6, bombs, as we've seen before, fuel tanks, and of course the amazing and veritable air-to-ground and air-to-air 30mm -air multi-barreled GAL-8 Gatling gun. Ammo of combat mix, high explosive incendiary, and practice. That is a massive quantity of weapons. The variety of weapons is certainly no match for the A10C. Regard sensors, we are limited in the A10A. We have a good modern signal strength based as opposed to threat based RWR here. Simplified. You might as well just assume that everything is simplified in the FC3 aircraft to make it easy to operate and use. We just have the screen here for the current seeker head of whichever Maverick we've got loaded. Good modern, solid, hard, relatively realistic, everything you'll need will be in there. And if I haven't mentioned for the uh, the previous Russian planes, they've all got the equivalent Russian HUD as well. We also have air-to-air -air refueling ability, which is pretty awesome. Not that you're ever going to run out of fuel in this thing, but it's cool. Navigation system, same as all the others basically, it's a mission editor specific IS, simplified INS waypoint system with full ILS landing capability. We also have an internal ECM jammer which is as effective as the A10C and the Harrier. We have a large quantity of chaff and flare, and again, sorry if I haven't mentioned, we have chaff and flare in the other Russian planes. We have lots of them in this aircraft, as in the A10C. You can see a huge battery of them. Air-to-air ordnance, we have basic bore sight ability, locking ability of the IR missiles. The ground attack, we have a nicely simplified CCIP or CCRP dropping ability, so we can get good accuracy with our various weapons. We have no type of radar, similar to the A10C. Probably most importantly, we have no targeting pod on this, so the only way we've got of targeting is visual, essentially, and using the uh, seeker heads on the AGM-65. Out of interest, do we know if the real A10A got a targeting pod? I have no idea. It'll be interesting to know. Okay, that's all I want to say about the capability. So next we're looking at the graphics, internal and external. So we'll flick through each plane in the cockpit and then we'll go and have a look outside. Now for graphics, the best thing is I just pan around the cockpits and really let you decide for yourself because it's pretty subjective. Everything so far looks average. I think Flaming Cliffs 3 generally speaking was released in like 2013 so you know six six odd years old so it is showing its age obviously the textures are all pretty simple comparable with something from that era like the a10c similar kind of graphics to that shadows all look pretty cool lighting is actually pretty cool Oops, didn't mean to do that. So all of these gauges, you can see everything works down here. But passively only. I'm glad this isn't high fidelity. Look how complex it is. Into the flanker. I think that's, this is the best looking cockpit in FC3.
looks just about average for the age, basically. Naval flanker. Similar but not identical to the land flanker. J11, very similar to the land flanker. Big 29, and this is the S, the Sierra version we've been looking at today. It's generally considered the uh, most capable version. Quite simple down here compared to the flanker. Eight and A, probably the worst looking one here, I'd, I'd imagine. But it looks very similar to the eight N C. Okay, let's have a look outside. So we've got all of the aircraft lined up, and we've also got our, the absolute top of the range, high fidelity F eighteen there. So as we go down the list, you can see what they're like compared to the top brass. So if we start with the Mig.
Let's move on to the JLM. SU-27 almost identical to the J-11, we'll just do a quick breeze over. Thirty three. Much heavier landing gear for this aircraft. than these guys. F fifteen C
A10A. And for reference, here is a high fidelity FA18C. This is top of the range in DCS World in 2019. Just so you can see how it differs to the FC3 planes. So you, can, so you can see that although they're not quite at the fidelity externally of the F-18, they are still pretty damn good. They've all got good quality exterior models. So at the end of that, and purely in terms of graphics, um, bearing in mind that we're, we're missing some effects, we don't have uh, low pressure condensation clouds when we pull, we do have wingtip kind of vortice trails. I'll say the cockpits, they're okay. They're kind of average, I'll say 2.5. The exterior models are all good and solid. I'd say they're four out of five. So that gives me for FC3, all of the models, inside and outside, a combined score of 3.25. Next is sound effects, interior and exterior. Exterior, all of these aircraft have really good sound effects, I think, comparable to the decent range of high fidelity models. Uh, I do a lot of video making, so I get to listen to the external sounds. The FC3s are the only ones that are completely solid. There, there are absolutely no bugs at all or glitches. The external sound, the volumes are all perfect from the external sound. So the external sounds are great. Interior sounds, these are not the most realistic aircraft in terms of sounds, but they're all actually very functional. And, and in many ways, they're better than a lot of the high fidelity sound models because we actually get, in a lot of cases, more detail. So let's just get straight on with it. I'm just gonna rev up and show you that I can hear that full range of sound in here exactly as I want to hear. A lot of aircraft in the high fidelity world don't even have that. Show you exterior. Go 
up and have some flight. First of all, what I want to hear ground. We're just going to go through the uniform checks, the logical checks that I do for all of these aircraft to keep them fair. And the similar, you can already hear, they've got good ground effect. Uh, sorry, good uh, ground rumble just at the right amount. Doesn't want to sound comedy, but I do need to hear it. So that's perfect. <laughs> Look at the other planes are there. That's funny. Let's give them a buzz, shall we? Steria just sounds, it sounds top of the range to be honest, it sounds better like I said than a lot of the full fidelity, or even most of the full fidelity models. So sounds are really, have done really good things with these things. Uh, next we want to try some wind noise, make sure we've got linear wind noise. So just listen how loud it, how loud it is here at low speed. Now we're going to punch the speed up and you can hear a massive increase in wind, in wind noise. That's exactly what I want, it's perfect, um, couldn't ask for any more, couldn't ask for any more. Next, we're going to look at uh, high G and we're going to look at um, high alpha sounds. These are things that must be transmitted to me through the sound model. That's just how a virtual pilot has to, it's just what I need. So already you can hear the G in the sound part, in the pilot's voice. It's good. It's much louder than in something than like a Hornet, much superior in terms of the balance of the sounds than just about all of the high fidelity modules. Next, we're going to put some high alpha on. You can hear that, you can hear the warning, like you're getting a lot of high fidelity, but you also get the sound. I mean, how hard is it just to add that sound in? A lot of the high fidelity guys just don't seem to bother. Can't be bothered to put it in my Tomcat. Can't be bothered to put it in my Vigan or whatever. Or, where, you know, whatever the reason is. I mean, the, the FC3 planes have got it perfect. Let's do it again. Watch the alpha down at the bottom. Perfect. Just the right amount of shape. It's not like the bloody Tomcat where you're trying to do you know got this crazy ridiculous comedy shake all the time it's just right again i don't want to moan but just how hard is it this costs like ten dollars and it's better than the high fidelity in so many ways it well anyway <clears throat> i'm gonna get myself in trouble if i go on any further but you know what i'm saying what i'm trying to get at is the sound model is the bollocks it's all there absolutely beautiful guns um fine all of the missiles and everything absolutely fine are they realistic Probably not. Are they functional? Do they give me the information I need? Yes, they all do. Okay, it's F-15. Let's go and grab a flanker. We'll just do one of the flankers because I think they all share the same engine. Uh, the annoying thing about the J-11 is the sound is a little quiet in the cockpit. That's a complaint I've got about it. Otherwise, it's all pretty top-notch. So you just can't hear. Let me just do it on the ground. Sorry, let me... I just realised I didn't do any free flybys of the F-15, so we'll have to do some more of this. Yeah, that's too quiet. I just can't hear what the engine's doing well enough. And I can't hear when the burners are on. So this one's not as good as the F-15. I have to rely on the lights to come on. Maybe that's realistic, but I need to... The real pilot can feel when the burners come on. He feels the punch in his back. I need that as a virtual pilot to be transferred as a sound to me. It's something I have to have. Uh, has it got ground rumble? Yes, you just heard it. Has it got uh, linear wind noise? You can already hear it ramping up, so yes. And it's great, it's right, everything is just in the right, apart from that engine sound, everything is right in the, in the right quantities, I don't have to strain to hear it like in some aircraft. Um, let's try high G. Hear that easy, you can hear the breathing easy, and it's, you know, I don't have to strain over the engine noise or the cockpit noise. Uh, next, let's do some alpha. No alpha noise. That was unexpected. Try again. You can hear it there. It's not as prevalent as it is in the F-15. I prefer it to come on a, a, a lesser angle, but at least we've got something there. Let's try that again. Watch the alpha down at the bottom. I don't know how to take the bloody um, fly-by-wire off, so hear it a bit there not as good as the f-15 but it's okay got still warning there guns same as the f-15 uh, everything's pretty good for the guns i actually haven't got this set up so i can't actually use the gun it's kind of annoying but you can take my word for it uh, all the other weapon sounds are good so it's not as good as the f-15 the engine i can't really hear what the engine's doing the alpha it's just not you've really got to wreck the alpha just to hear anything so you can hear it there but i'm doing like 22 degrees alpha 
prefer if that was a little, that came in a little earlier, but you can just about hear it. Let's try a MiG-29, I should have a bit more control. It's got a less intrusive uh, control system for this, so. Uh, let's better check the sound as well, I think it's a lot better from memory. Yeah, you see, you can now hear the engines. I mean, that's all I want, all I want is to hear what the engines are doing. Half the modules, you can't do any of that, it really drives me nuts. So that's there, can I hear the burners? No, that's annoying, and I know it's not realistic, but I need a burner sound. I need to know in a dogfight, and I'm looking like that, I need to know when those burners are on. Like I said, a real pilot can feel it, but I need to be able to hear it. Okay, first of all, just listen for sound. Yep, you can already hear the sound mounting up, so that's good. I'm gonna go through these uh, guys here, get some speed up, and then we'll try some G, and we'll try some alpha. G, but, excuse me, G first of all, you can hear the guy. It's perfectly loud, I can hear it fine. The wind noise is a bit high, but it's okay. I mean, look how fast I'm going. It is a real, we'll talk about it in the flight model, actually. Uh, next, we're gonna try some outfire. I'm gonna try not to destroy myself. You can hear the alpha there. You can hear it more than the, um, you can hear it more than the flanker, at least. Let's try that again. Going for some alpha. there again a bit like the flank I wish it was more you know if I really bunny hop it obviously I can hear it but I'd love to hear it a bit earlier again I'm not saying that it's realistic to make it come in earlier but I'm saying as a virtual pilot who can't feel things that a real pilot can I need that input that's something we need uh, it's okay it's there but you have to push it a bit too far until the sound comes on a bit like the flanker oh hey boys Woo. Like I just realized I forgot the sound of the flanker I'll go back for that in a minute there's a the thing. I didn't realise we had vapour clouds in this. Well, that was me saying that we don't have them, and it appears to have changed. Right. Uh, that is an interesting thing. Sounds cool, right? If you've watched my uh, F-14 tutorial, you so saw how, how annoyed I am at that F-14 sound engine, how awful it is. When, you know, the plane gets away from you, the sound doesn't get any less, it stays just as loud. How hard is that? Seriously, look at these, F-$10 planes, perfect. It just makes me so angry. Let's pretend that didn't happen. Uh, so what we're going to do is just quickly go back to the flanker and uh, just have a little listen to the exterior sound. I know we've got a lot to fit in one video, and it's going to be a long video, but that's just how it is. Burner. It's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Low power flyby. Lovely, that's all I want in a sound engine. Perfect. Intake sound. Power. Again, you can hear the dynamics that a lot of modules are missing. Listen how quiet it goes when it's out there, when it's a mile away and, and it comes back in It'll be a lot more, it'll be a lot louder. If I can fly in reverse, which I can't. It's perfect, it's beautiful. Sometimes I honestly just wish that they put the FC3 sound packs in the um, in the standard planes, which solve so many complaints and problems. This um, it's an A10A sounds fine to me. In fact, I prefer the sound in this to the A10C. So perfect. You can hear what the engines are doing. It sounds lovely. 
That's just the same as the A10C actually, but uh, I find them a bit louder in the cockpit and a bit more balanced, so I just prefer it that way. Oh, tail strike. Inside, see if we've got wind. Hey, boys. Gal sounds amazing, obviously. It's the sound, same, same sound effect as the 18C, I believe. Speed up, see if we can get some wind noise in here. Yeah, that's wind noise, you can really hear that wind noise. Uh, what we're gonna do, it's not obviously it's not really made for this, but we're gonna see if we can get some airframe noises. See if we can get some G in there. Got the Alpha Limiter telling me off, obviously. G sounds fine, the levels are fine. Let's see if we can get some Alpha sounds in. Yeah, that's that's pretty cool. Altitude, altitude. A bit like the flanker, it doesn't come on. It comes on a bit late for me. I'd like it more progressive, so it can really help me. But you could argue you've got the warning beacons there. That's okay. Nice and loud. You can't miss that. Not like the F-18 where everything's hidden behind just a massive, weird APU sound or whatever it is. It drives me nuts. Draw a nice heart for Alaskan, shall I? Altitude. So that's there. I mean, it's all there. Uh, the flanker needs a little bit of fine tuning, I think, for the reasons I've said, possibly the MiG 29, but it's all there and it just works really well, better than the vast majority of the, um, or better than, yeah, to be honest, just better than, better than almost all of the uh, the, the modules. And I'm ideally placed to judge this because I I have to compare these, these planes against each other in my videos and I've never had to fix an FC3 plane. I always have to fix the uh, high fidelity, the MiG-21, terrible, the Vigan, way too quiet, the F-14, just a mess, and a whole bunch of other ones to haunt it, massive pain in the ass to work with if you're going to make videos. Interior, that is, interior. So just because these are cheap and simple, don't think that they're not modelled well in terms of, uh, oh dear, in terms of sound, and in terms of visuals, like we said, they've got good visuals, especially outside. I know that wasn't as comprehensive as I usually do for the single modules, but that's as comprehensive as I want to go. In fact, let's just do an exterior sound. So for sound, for all of them, everything together, it's a good solid four out of five. I mean, for what's there, obviously you could argue it's missing all the, a lot of interior sounds where, um, you know, clicking buttons and stuff, none of that, you know, you can't do that. So none of that makes sounds and you're missing a lot of warning sounds and funk and, and system sounds compared to the uh, high fidelity planes. But we're just judging what we've got and what we've got is just very good. While we're in the air, which I guess we should do the flight models and the flight models, are, to be honest, are absolutely fine. Now, the reality is these flight models I'm not sure exactly how it works, I'm not going to really pretend to tell you, but they have less detailed flight models than the high fidelity aircraft. But in terms of what you can feel as the layman, I can't really feel any difference. And you know what, a lot of these FC3 flight models I find better than a lot of the high fidelity models. A lot of the high fidelity models have been ruined uh, to me, like the F-14 with its weird upwards pitch thing that it does for no reason just completely ruins the flight model for me and i've made a series of complaints of various aircraft for having for having what i consider bad flight models i'm not saying that unrealistic but for a player for immersion they just break your immersion completely it just feels awful all of these f3 flight engines uh, flight models are uh, just feel good they all feel right and don't think that they're simple either. They have all the various drag characteristics. If I've just got a bomb on the left wing, but not the right wing, the thing will weigh down that way. They all feel like they've got the necessary weight uh, and momentum and stuff like that, just as good, in my in my opinion, as the, uh, the high fidelity flight models. They're probably not as complicated in terms of damage and stuff like that, so I'll give it that. They're probably not as complicated in terms of systems failures and stuff like that. 
I can't say that for honest, but that's probably how it is. Trim and everything like that feels just as good as any kind of high fidelity model. Ground physics, pretty much just as good. Maybe not quite there. It's, it's like the Hornet, uh, maybe the F5, but the physics ground model is all fine. There's nothing weird there. They all land perfectly fine and the wheels interact with the ground fine. Regards high G maneuvers, I mean, this is a real stupid one to do it in. Let me go and get some else. Regards high G maneuvers, they will feel absolutely fine to me. Tail strike, or not, the power of that thing, does it sound gorgeous? Uh, where are the buildings, I want to challenge, watch this, down here it feels just as good to be honest, and this is the flanker and a MiG-29 as well pretty much, I can't tell the difference between quality in terms of a you know a hornet and an f-15 here i'm gonna do just everything i can with a hornet i can do with this feels just as good feels just as rewarding and satisfying in right turn Stalling, everything just feels fine. Reaction to weather conditions like high winds and stuff, I find it just as good, sometimes better than a lot of the high fidelity models for whatever reason. Again, um, you know, this is how it feels to me, but you know, I have like all of the planes, I'm pretty well placed to judge this. So in summary, no, they're not as complex and in some ways I guess you'd say complete as the full flight models. At the end of the day, they feel perfectly good. I can hardly tell the difference and they haven't got the weird, a lot of the weird kind of crappy, not bugs, but you know, just the things that piss you off. Like I was talking about the F-14 and a whole bunch of other stuff that the higher fidelity models have. So because they're good, simple, but completely effective, I'm going to give them a good, solid four out of five for flight model. Next is interactivity and detail, and there is pretty much no interactivity. Um, there is nothing along here I can click with my mouse. Everything looks beautiful, nothing does anything. Like I said, it is passively uh, accurate in that all of the dials and gauges work, the displays work. Well, I'd say the main, absolute main, simplified functions of these displays work. So it is super simplified compared to a real flanker and the F-15, super simplified compared to a real F-15 and so on. But that's just how it needs to be. The way I control uh, a lot of a lot, not all of the functions are modeled, but a fair few of them are. And the way I have to uh, manipulate them is by hundreds and hundreds of, uh, of keyboard commands or HOTAS bindable commands. And again, their function is very simple compared to the high fidelity module. So that's something you have to prepare for if you're going to do FC3. So obviously, we have to rate uh, detail and uh, fidelity sorry detail and interaction one out of five because that's the lowest we can go and that's just how they are in terms of difficulty it's really easy for me to give a number that's going to be one out of five because they're all equally and really easy to fly in terms of history they're six or seven years old now please correct me if i'm wrong that's just how i remember it but i don't really remember any problems does anyone remember bugs problems with the fc3 planes like missiles not working and and um, controls not working and damage model not working i just really can't remember any scratch it the uh, su-33 was bugged for a while it couldn't use its uh, uh carry landing capabilities that is a thing about half a year maybe up to a year uh, in multiplayer the carry operations were bugged with the su-33 so that's a thing mig-29 radar still got some problems in multiplayer still crashes servers well i haven't tested it for about two months but i'm making making an assumption so i take it back they're not bug free but generally speaking most of those things are you know specific to multiplayer or specific to you know something that you don't do very often so generally the systems and everything of what there is has been pretty pretty reliable i found please correct it correct me if i'm wrong you know it's anecdotal here i've not got a list of problems or anything now I did promise you some kinetic data, so let's get on with it. Peak sustained rate with 50% gas, ISA, deck. 
The master being the FA18C at 420 ta KTAS peak is 22, uh, 22 degrees per second sustained. With the MiG 29G, which is uh, more maneuverable than the S, by the way, as far as I can tell, 450 KTAS, 21 degrees per second. So that is an FC3 plane. Where's the next one? J11 with a range of 270 to 480 KTAS at 19 degrees per second with 30% 30, 30 gas, which we compared as being half combat gas. F-15C, 350 to 450 range, uh, KTAS at 19 degrees per second, so we're all perfectly good. Flanker, 400 to, this is actually 50% gas, not 30, bearing in mind this one, that's why it's slower than the J-11. Uh, 430, 18 degrees per second, SU-33, a lot bigger, a lot heavier, 350 to 500, good range, but only down to um, 16 degrees per second, and also that was without special afterburner mode, and that's that. Instantaneous altitude, the maximum of F-15C, 108, MiG-29A at 106, SU-27 at 98,000, uh, and that's a lot. Max service ceiling, the highest is, ignore that, that was an old model, the SU-27 with 72K, F-15C. These are the big, these are the two highest kinetic fighters in DCS and will probably stay. Uh, even an F-16 won't be able to compete with them, so these will probably always stay the biggest kinetic fighters. Um... F-15C, 71,000. Uh, MiG-29A, 60,000. Smaller wings. Highest speed optimal altitude. This is, we think this is BS. First of all, because all of the FC-3 planes are at the top. You see the MiG-29A, Mach 2.83 optimal, uh, which we think is wrong. The F-15C, Mach 2.6, which we think is about right. FC-27, 2.54, we think that's wrong. Which should, should be more like 2.2, maybe. FC-33, 2.49, we think that's wrong. And the high fidelity models just go kind of downwards from there. So the, the top speeds of FC3 we don't think is right. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's that's just not correct. And the FC3 in general do tend to be a feel a little more powerful uh, acceleration and all that stuff than the other planes. How realistic that that, that is. I'm, Let's move on. Low speed max altitude. Vigan's the fastest. Then the F14. Then the SU33 with special afterburner mode down here. Even at high speed, it gives us a massive thrust gain. Mac uh, 1.252, then the MiG-29, very powerful to compared to its weight, 1.25, F-15C, 1.24, SU-27, 1.18, and that's it. Low attitude acceleration, 300 to 650 KTAS on the deck, ISA, F-15C is the best at acceleration, uh, MiG-29A is basically the same. SU-33 with special afterburner mode, 19.28, SU-27, 19.83. Uh, that's my lot. High altitude, Angels 15, 300 to 650 KTAS. F-15C is the best by miles. AGS Vigan, which uh, no one can figure that out, why that's so good up there, but it is at the moment. MiG-29A, 23 seconds. SU-27, 27 seconds. SU-33, even with special afterburner mode, just doesn't do a lot up there. 29.14. Climb rate to 20,000 from the QRE standstill. MiG-29, just its power to weight and its weight... Uh, lightness and everything about it 57 seconds amazing scratch that that was just an old model f15 59 seconds su27 one minute and nine not that good it's just a very heavy uh, guy su33 so heavy even with best afterburner mode only 1.14 climb rate but from a 600 not start 24.6 for the f mig 29 25.0 for the f15 uh special afterburner mode the su33 27, 28.9 with SU-27. And that's it. Kinetically, they're the best planes out there um, over the whole spectrum. Especially the F-15, the MiG-29 and the Land Flanker. So, for a summary, good, solid planes. Excellent performance. The detail is very low, obviously. There are not system, not very much many systems to learn. The manuals are very small. They're all about 100 to 150 pages, which for a DCS manual is like a pamphlet. So the, if you just want to fly and you don't want to have to study the manuals and the tutorials, then here they are for you. And they're just they're just good. They're good all round. There's nothing bad to say about any FC3 models. If you want your aircraft to be high fidelity, then no problem. Go for your high fidelity modules. In terms of who I would recommend these to, I would recommend these, well, to anyone, especially noobs. Noobs that come in, there's such a steep learning curve for DCS about all aeronautics and avionics. You've got to learn all this stuff to be an effective fighter. 
let alone the planes themselves, stick with an FC-3 plane or FC the whole FC-3 pack, master all those aeroplanes, ground attack and air to attack, air attack, and then move on to your high fidelity models. So I hope that was useful to you guys out there and I'll see you later.